Hello there. Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of seven books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today I want to talk about something that I think can be really important to everyone. It's the true cause of our stress, frustration, anxiety, anger, annoyance, depression, all those negative experiences. There is a quote that I'm sending out to those 6,000 folks on my quote list. And by the way, if you would like to receive one of my favorite quotes each week, along with two or three paragraphs about how to apply that quote to life, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, or just Google Bill Crawford PhD. I'll come up on the first page. Hit the subscribe button. Put your name, email address in there. It's free. Every week I'll send you one of these quotes, along with two or three paragraphs about how to apply it to life. This is one of mine. It says, until we know the true cause of our stress, frustration, and anxiety, we won't be able to do anything about it. And I think that's one of the things that's so stressful about stress and frustrating about frustration is that sometimes we can't nail down that cause or we think we know the cause, but we can't do anything about it. We can't change it. Now, if we are in a, an abusive relationship or a toxic work environment where we are clear that if someone we love came to us and described that situation, we would say, hey, make some changes, well, that can be a valuable signal. You know, there's one quote I use in my uh, workshops that says, stress is a signal, something needs to change. Suffering is when we don't make the change. So when we can make the change, stress, frustration can be a valuable signal. We can make that change. We feel less stressed, less frustrated. We can move on. What if we can't make the change or we don't know exactly what's causing it? See, I think what we have to be careful about is looking out there for the cause. Because when we do, the problem is if we can't change out there, if it's a deadline or uh, comes some difficult person that when we try to change them, they get worse, uh, or just something where we just don't know what's going on, that makes us feel more powerless, kind of less effective, and deepens our stress, our frustration, anxiety. So what I like to do is show people new information about what is the true cause of our stress, frustration, anxiety. There is a quote I use from Albert Einstein that says, problems cannot be solved at the same level of awareness that created them. So I like to help people understand that true cause so that we can do something about it. So in this video, I want to kind of show you what that is and give you a model for how to influence it. This is something I learned when I got uh, my PhD. I took a course called The Biological Basis of Behavior. And in it, I learned that everything we think and feel and do and say, how we react to others, how others react to us, all has to do with how the brain processes information. So I went, ooh, if I can figure out a way to help people influence that process, we can have a lot of influence in our life and in the lives of others. So I began to look at the brain, how it works, and I kind of discovered that we can divide the brain into three parts. Each of them do different things. Lower part of the brain's called the brain stem. You've heard of this. This is, what our, this is where our fight or flight responses are located. Middle part of the brain's called the limbic system. Now what me, people don't know about this middle brain is this middle brain acts as a gatekeeper. Or in today's terminology, it acts as a scanner, a processor, and a router. It scans incoming data, processes it or interprets it, and then either routes it down to the brainstem or up to the upper 80% of the brain, the neocortex, what I call the top of the mind, where we have access to our interpersonal skills, problem-solving skills, clarity, confidence, creativity, compassion, etc. So in order to be able to deal with life and understand what's truly happening and have some influence over our stress, frustration, or anxiety, we've got to be in this upper 80% of the brain. We've got to be in the upper 80% of the brain that's aware of what's going on. So how do we get there? First thing I think we need to do is take a deep breath. Now I know, people go, oh Bill, don't tell me to take a deep breath. I hate it when somebody tells me that it doesn't change anything. Okay, you're right, it doesn't change anything out there, but we're not trying to change out there first. We're trying to shift to this upper 80% of the brain. And the upper 80% of the brain doesn't normally control breathing or muscle tension. That's normally controlled by the lower 20% of the brain. So when we breathe deeply, kind of hold it for four seconds, release it for four seconds, and say the word relax on the exhale, we are actually having this upper 80% of the brain take over two functions, breathing and muscle tension, 
normally controlled by the lower brain. So literally, we're giving this upper 80% of the brain the opportunity to regain control. Now, it may take more than one time. It's got to be slow, got to be doing it very purposely, and you need to be counting while you're doing it because the upper 80% of the brain is the only part of the brain that can count. I like the 444 method where you inhale for a count of four, hold it for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, say the word relax on the exhale. So you want to do that until you feel in control. Then what you want to do is shift from a focus on the problem to the solution. Rather than going, okay, why am I so stressed? You want to say, okay, if I were dealing with this situation in a way that was more purposeful, in a way that was more effective, in a way I would teach to someone I love, how would I rather be feeling? What would be the qualities and characteristics I would like to be able to draw upon? Most people say clarity, confidence, creativity, joy, uh, happiness. Okay, so what we want to do is use this very powerful part of the brain to imagine the last time in our life or what it feels like when we're feeling happy and joyful and confident and clear. What's my tone of voice like? What's my body language like? Who am I when I am feeling how I want to feel now? Here's the thing about the brain. It doesn't know the difference between a real and an imagined event. Sometimes in my seminars, I take people through an Im, uh, uh, exercise where they're imagining biting into a lemon. Everybody in the room is kind of going, Bleh. Now, they know they're not really biting into a lemon, but the brain doesn't know the difference, and so it creates a chemical reaction. So when we are stressed and frustrated and angry and overwhelmed and worried and anxious, we are holding images of what that made us feel or how that made us feel or the situation. That triggers adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol, the stress hormones. When we say, okay, we breathe and relax and we get really clear, how would I rather be feeling? And what was it like when I was feeling that way, when I was being that way? We create an image of us being the way we want to be, and that triggers serotonin and endorphins, because that's what this upper 80% of the brain does. So once we've been able to breathe and relax and ask that question, how would I rather be feeling? What would I teach to someone I love? And imagine feeling that way, then what you want to do is to notice the change. Because the at the end of this model, you will be feeling differently. You'll be feeling more calm, more clear, more in control, more relaxed. Because each one of these steps is neocortex, top of the mind in nature. Plus the model spells brain. I like my models to spell things so it's easier to remember. Breathe, relax. Ask, imagine, notice. Breathe and relax until we feel in control. Ask that neocortex top of the mind question, how would I rather be feeling? What would I teach to someone I love? Imagine being that way, notice the change. Now that has had a shift to this upper 80% of the brain. That doesn't solve all the problems, but at least what it does, it has us coming from this clear, confident, creative part of who we are versus this old reactive part of who we are. Now, what I then do is I go and teach people how to stay in this clear, confident, creative, compassionate brain and how to engage others who are resistant to what we're saying. How do we get them to shift from their resistant brain to the receptive brain? This is what I do. I love to do this. If you'd like me to come and do this for your organization, your school, your church, your family, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in, and I would love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, if you're liking the videos, please hit the like button. You know how all the social media love it when you like it. Share it with your friends if you want. Make sure you're subscribing to me on iTunes and Pinterest and YouTube and uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and all those places. I post one of these every week. So if this is valuable, I'm going to look forward to keeping connecting with you each week. So here is to you, bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.